All right, we're getting there, getting there. Now, I don't know if you can see, but if you have a look up there, you'll see a goanna climb that tree there. <laughs> so, all very interesting stuff. All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again. Welcome back. Back down the river. Another absolutely fantastic day on the river too. Absolutely excited. Now what I've got in the back of my plain air trailer is some really big canvases. I cannot wait to get stuck into it. Just gonna have my morning cup of tea, have a bit of a look around. Find the right composition, find the right gum tree. There's plenty of, plenty of fantastic trees here to paint. Just got to find the one that I think is going to be right for this occasion, set up and get stuck into it. First I'll have this cuppa, and then we'll do it. Alright. First cuppa for the day, first sip of the first cuppa. Great stuff. Been doing a lot of studio work recently, which is great. Got a lot of good work done, pretty happy with that. Just can't beat being out in the bush on plain air, there's something about it. You've got the perfect weather for it, plenty of canvases. So it should be good. Should be good. Supposed to be nice weather this trip, around 30 degrees. Beautiful still day, it's the perfect day for painting. All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Today, back down the river, big stretched white canvas all ready to go, buckets and buckets of oil paint, and massive pellet knives. Okay, pretty excited, haven't been on the river for a while, so haven't been out plein air painting for a while, so 
let's get into it. All right, what I've done here is I've already marked a bit of an imaginary line through here, which is nice and level. And that'll just set me up for the composition. And now I'll just start drawing the shapes. I'm gonna be painting those gum trees just there. Now I'll start drawing a few of the shapes. Right, let's get into it. Okay, I'll go for some alizarin crimson. Maybe a bit of ready and green. I want to produce, just get rid of that white. I want to produce a good dark. And if you go for the opposite sides of the color wheel, like red and green, blue and orange, anything like that, you'll get good darks. The two mixed together make a very dark tone. So, saying that, <coughs> excuse me, I'll do a bit of that. Now I might go, for the ultramarine, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is pretty much really an orange, so when you're going ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, you are using the opposite side of the color wheel. And that in itself will produce a massive dark also. So I'm starting with the darks first, obviously in this painting, as you can see. I'll go a bit of straight ultramarine blue. Now I'm using the white, Instead of the uh, raw Belgian linen earthy tones, I'm using the white today. And I find the benefit of the white is there's a translucency about it. That blue there, there's no white in it, but because it's rubbed on thinly, I'm seeing, it's a bit like a watercolor. I'm seeing the white coming through because it's only one coat. And that's giving a really great extra quality to the paint which is harder to achieve any other way. Just one coat. We'll just work out what we're doing here first before we get too cat eye. I'm out like that, just feeling the shapes how I want them to be today. Just make it up as you go, anything can be fine, so long as it's appealing, visually appealing. Just looking that up, oh, that's looking alright, okay. Might use some burnt sienna and yellow ochre here. There is going to be a bit of a branch wobbling its way down here somewhere, so I'm just, it's getting the reflected light from the ground bouncing back up, so it's a much warmer tone as the light bounces off the earth. Another lovely day on the river. Quite warm, about 30 degrees. It is autumn now, but because I'm in outback Australia, there's still plenty of heat around. All right. Feel that as we go. Somewhere along there, that's looking good, okay. A variety, so I'll throw a bit of magenta in there now. So I've got a good colour variance. I've got reds, greens, blues, magentas, all in those dark tones. A bit more blue here. Now a bit more of the earthy browns. So, like I've done other times, I'm painting the darks in first. And then I'll get stuck into the lights. I like to paint dark on light, that's a good way to do it with, with oil paint. You can do it the other way around, but it's probably easiest doing it this way. Now I might just introduce a little bit of white to that ultramarine. I'm just going back a scale now. Magenta. What do we got here? Nice little tree. There, there. Just working out what I want. I want randomness. So I'm positioning the trees, not exactly what's there, I'm positioning where I want them because if I move a couple of steps this way or a couple of steps that way, the trees on the other side will move anyway. So you might as well move them now, get the composition that you want, get a, a pleasing flow on this two dimensional surface. Burnt sienna. Just 
scratching in some of the dark tones on the other side. Putting them where I feel it's correct. Okay, might do a bit of foliage on the other side, so I'll go Viridian Green. What is it today? Maybe put a tad of magenta in with the Viridian Green. Let's just have a look at that. Obviously needs much more burnt sienna to make it more of a brown colour. A little bit of white to lighten it. Just feeling it as we go. Yeah, something like that. It could be a little bit more yellow ochre. That's the beauty about painting on site. You can... It is a lot easier to judge the colours and tones when you're out there on location. Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Viridian Green. What do we have here? Like I said, just block those shadows in first and then work it out later on. Something like that. Just a few live up there, look at that. Just a few there. Right. Now, going to go back a tone. The distant stuff, which is a little further away. So let's just go magenta. Bit of ultramarine blues. White. I just want to knock it right back. Let's have a look. Yeah. Lighten that tone a bit. It's a grey twiggy. foliage colour of the distance. There's a lot of that kind of greyness in the arid landscape, these kind of dusty mows if you like. Just put that in first. Then I'll go for more of the green foliage colour. Magenta, viridian green, white, ultramarine blue. Magenta, white. What do we have here? Now these are the shadow tones I'm painting and I'm trying to purposely key them down so they're a cooler, greyer version of what's going on in these foreground ones to help send them off into the distance. They're cooler tones. And that's what you do. Constantly working around. Now, there's always so much to do with a plein air painting. So much work, but so much fun at the same time. Ultramarine blue, magenta, a little bit of white. I'm just going to knock in. Just a few of these shadows on the banks here. I might just go a bit more magenta. That's a little bit too excitingly blue. <laughs> Like I said, like I said, I'll just keep on refining at the moment. I'm just trying to get dark tones in. Give myself an exciting color combination to work with. Right. Comes down to there, yeah, something like that. Viridian green, burnt sienna. Still in the shadow tones. Burnt sienna, magenta. That's more of a natural green colour rather than those almost artificial blues. Oops, it's a bit brown. Go a bit greener. All right. Stand back from and have a look. Okay, that's all working well. Let's just get some ultramarine blue. Just 
Lighten it a tad. Ultramarine blue. Just putting some beautiful colours in the water. The shadows from the trees on this side casting in. Just a few like that. Yeah, that'll do. Right, what do we got here? Let's get some Viridian greens. Just got to keep on marching around the canvas. Yellow ochre, Viridian greens. Just picking out a beautiful bank on the other side. All right, okay, now we're recording, beauty. Maybe we should put that sky in before we go much further. We've got a bin just there, which just comes in handy. Clean knife. All right, it's a full sunny day. There's a little bit of a haze on the horizon. So, each day is different. Down here, I'll work with some burnt sienna you just drop a little bit of ultramarine blue and go white and see what we get here. The ultramarine blue will grey it. Now we need plenty of white because it's the sky. Plenty of white. Lighten that tone. A little bit of yellow ochre. Very much an ochre colour down there with all that haze. But at the same time... It is a bit of a blue and it's like that'll key it off. Just grey it that little bit because it is a long way away. It's a distant haze. So it's kind of like a warm brownie greyish colour. Let's have a look. Just got to get the tone right. That tonally may be a bit too white. So let's just add a little bit more of the colours. Burnt siennas and blues. Yeah, it's looking very white to me, too white. So I'll go darker. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna. I want to get it established the right tone now. Blue. So it's the same colour, but now it's got less white. <laughs> Could even go more, believe it or not, more blue. Okay, what do we got? Throwing it in all the gaps down low. Whoa, bits of paint flying around. I'd like to see that in slow motion. <laughs> Happened again, the knife. The knife's bending backwards. Now I've gone more ultramarine blue. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, white. Mixing up more of a brew. It's a bit more what I want, slightly darker in tone, so it's more obvious against that white that we've got there so far. Chuck that in. A bit more ochre in it, as in yellow ochre and white. Now, there's not a lot of blue in it just yet. It looks very ochery. Don't worry, I'll get there. I'll get there. Going to ultramarine blue now. Cleaner mix. Less of the ochres. More of the blues and the whites. Darken it ever so slightly. What do we have here? Try not to touch the darks too much just yet, because it'll get a bit muddy. Okay, now I'm going to go up a layer. 
ultramarine blue, so it's getting a cleaner blue. Darker, less white, less ochres. We'll just blend them together a bit. There's a bit too much of a jump there. Let's have a look. Yep. Just go a tad darker now, a bit more ultramarine blue. Get that paint on. Blend it. Drop it into there, only just touching. Right, going up a layer, a bit more blue, mixing on the fly. Slightly darker tone, cleaner colour. What have we got? Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. Darker and darker as we go up, up into the blue heavens. Okay, now I'm just going to move all that over to here so I can get it on my pants and my top later on when I'm not concentrating enough. <laughs> Ultramarine blue, I just want a cleaner colour, so that's why I moved it. A little bit of magenta. So there's a bit of a, a little bit of a redness about this one. The sky is so blue and deep up there. At the top of the picture, looking up. Just a beautiful colour up there. We'll put those in. Quick smart. I'll tell you what I'll do, just go a little bit redder with the ultramarine. Oh, we're getting there, getting there. Oh, there's so much, so much adventure and fun to be had working on site at such a large scale. Always an adventure. Yeah. Just picking out some draftsmanship there. Yellow Caboon Sienna. Picking out some of the shapes a little better there. <laughs> Pulling through. Now at the moment, like I said, a lot of those are shadows rather than any light source yet. Don't worry. We'll get to all the other stuff. Now I'll stand back and have a look. All right, well that's all good. Now let's get some of that. Let's get some of that water in. Yellow ochre. What colour is it today? Don't see any yellow ochre. A little bit of Viridian green. I might use just some of these colours over here. That pale blue that I left. Some of the sky colours. So it doesn't go to waste. I can use it in this khaki type coloured water. Each day is different when it comes to the colour of the water. That's about right. It's quite yellow ochre. The sunny days seem to have more yellow ochre in it. And the overcast days seem to be a little bit more... more of a green, less of an ochre, I guess. Got a little bit too much there, I'll take that off. Just 
there. There's going to be sand introduced there. A little bit of blending. And it's very ochre on the bank here, but down in the foreground it's a little bit sandier almost. Just do some little marks to pull it together. A bit more ochre in there. Won't hurt anyone. Coverage. Yep. Now I'm also leaving some blank white bits there as you can see, that's because I'm going to put some reflections in the sky in as well. Let's just have a look. All right, we're going again, good, it's still on. All right, white, blue, sky blues. Just have a look what color I've got here, hang on. Put a bit more of that blue in there while I'm at it. Let's have a look. A bit more ochre in that. Yellow ochre and blue. Makes it a sky, it's a mixture of the watercolour. But also, that reflection is a mixture, uh, that reflection of the sky is a mixture of the watercolour and the sky. Now hang on, I'm just gonna get, just gonna get a little bit of phthalo blue. Ultramarine blue is a slight red blue, but at the moment I want a slight green blue, so phthalo blue will give me that. Just a slightly cleaner colour, so when I mix it with the ochres, it'll come up a cleaner colour. It's got less red in it. Alright, let's go. Start again. Ultramarine blue, white, that's better. Cleaner colour. Phalo blue, white. Getting a little cleaner, like I said, just a tiny tinge of ochre. Little bits of blue here and there. cleaner blue up the top here and it goes more into the greens down there. Blend them together a bit more. All right, let's have a look at that. All right, let's just keep moving around. We've got that in. You always got to go for the things that are the least finished end at the moment. That bank is not finished, so. It's an earthy color. Yellow ochres, burnt siennas, slightly greyed off the soil. I'll start with it slightly greyed off and if I need stronger, I'll, it's got a fair bit of blue in that mix. If I need it stronger, I'll get rid of the blue and add more of the ochres. But for now, let's just get that in.
red sienna, yellow ochre, white, white. Just a little browner down here, so I've introduced a bit more of that. Clean that blue off. Now, what do we got here? Right. Just go a tone darker. So we've got burnt sienna. A little bit more blue in it, just to grey it because it's a little bit too ochre I'm just going to slightly wetter sand. With that wetter sand, it needs to be not. Too ochre, it just needs a slight grey with it, so by putting the blue with the browns, it just greys the soil off that little bit. Go a darker version of it here because there's some scrubby stuff on the bank, which is quite dark really in comparison because you get the flood marks in these areas too you can see you get the lines where the different floods over the years have come up to so it just kind of leaves a straight line like so I can actually see one about here running through interesting stuff Bit more white, bit more ochres for some. Whoops, a bit too much. A bit too yellow, so I'm going to add a little bit of lizard and crimson there. Right, now that's a lighter yellowy tone where it's more sunlit, more accented. Have a look at that. Okay, now in the water. The reflection of that bank is a slightly keyed down version of itself in the green water, so it's it's kind of a lighter toned version of its not a lighter, sorry, a weaker toned version of itself, a little bit darker than the white above. Put that in. Keep working around, right here. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, white. Let's get this thing covered. Let's get going before the light changes. Maybe a tiny twang of magenta in that. And blue. Picks up a nice brew there, chunky paint for the foreground. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Look at that. Move that paint around. Doing broken colour here. Variances of some magentas and whites. Some is yellow ochres and whites. Just feeling as we go. That's the foreground. Wonderful bird life. Wonderful bird life here. Beautiful spot to come if you're into that sort of thing. Just 
just working on. Getting some light and shadow. On the base of these trunks. A bit of light shining here. light shining there. Bird Sienna. Varying the colours and marks. Only what do we got here? See, that's the right colour for the tree, but tonally it's way too light because that's the shadow I'm doing at the moment. It's kind of got a spiral effect on the bark, or it sort of spins as it goes up, which is very interesting. A little bit more of the ochre there as we come down into that light source. Yeah. Burnt sienna. The yellow ochre. Just feeling the draftsmanship of those trunks. Something like that. Getting there, but what I've got to do, I've got a lot of the shadow tones of that foliage. I've got to get the light tones of that foliage now, and that'll be where those white, that'll be where those white blobs have been left. Let's get into that now, because that is the thing that's really showing up as being not quite finished yet. Just have a look. Right, before I do that. Going to do a little bit of blending of these ochres into that blue sky. So they're not staring at each other, they're actually molding into one. Let's get those ochres in the lower part of the sky, gradually blend them into the beautiful blue day. As they go up, slowly gets darker tone. Wipe it clean if you get any of that shadow tone on, you don't want that in amongst your lovely blue paint. Birds are uh, really putting on a show today, which is great. Celebrating the day. So those ochres are getting, like I said, more evenly gradiated, not just staring at each other. Wipe the knife clean every time. We go up this way to blend it in. Let's 
just get a clean knife and just introduce those acres up into the blue like so. See if that's gradiated better. A bit better right, now let's get those shadow tones that we were talking about a second ago. Sorry, those light tones, the foliage. <clears throat> Yellow oak, Viridian green, a bit of magenta to grey it off. Put those sky blues from here to help just turn it into more of a distant colour. Let's have a look. Yeah. Just a little bit more ochre. Viridian green, just got to be a little bit greener. More magenta. Get a coverage. Pretty in green, magenta, white. Yeah. A bit more of the oak is with it. Clean knife. Just softening. Softening where the foliage meets the sky. Clean knife, just pull through a little. Still recording? Yeah, beauty. Okay, what do we got? Always moving around, want some darks again. Pick out some tree growth. Via some dark marks. Like I said earlier, just putting them where you feel like the composition needs them. Good variety. Right, now with that foliage where it's meeting, just want to lightly pull through with a knife to keep it clean. Just helps marry it, marry it into the sky so it doesn't just stand there looking at it. Okay. Bit more I pull through. Make a nice clean. Pull through. Wipe clean. So 
some of these shadows now can be dragged around too. Softening those shadows on the bank on the other side. Right now we've got a lot of the bulk in. I might just put some of the light tones of that tree now. I've got a lot of the shadow tones of that tree. We've got a bit of cad red. Just gonna use a tube for cad red because I've got some cad yellow, cad red here. You don't need a lot of it, so it doesn't need to be in big buckets or anything like that. Go to a slightly smaller knife. Now what are we going to do? Let's just mix up a bit of those yellows and make a nice orangey sort of colour so I can use that when I need to. Bit of white. Grab some pure white with a little bit of those cads in it. Not too much. A little bit goes a long way. Gotta work out where I want that. Touch a yellow acre in that too. Clean up an area just here, I'll move that over there. The idea of that is I can get much more of my light source here without getting them disturbed. Now I'm going a bit more of the yellow ochre rather than the cads, I'm finding that's a bit more natural looking. Yeah, that's better. I prefer that yellow ochre and white. Put bits on here and there where you feel like it's always changing because the day is always changing. Just mixing up alizarin crimson and oak is here. Much of that beautiful browns on the side of the tree here. That's some beautiful colours. Just blend them in like so by pulling through with a knife. You can get some great effects by doing that. Pulling the knife through them really softens them and adds that feeling of bark. You can see those trees are really starting to come to life with very little work then. It's just all... Well, a little bit of magenta, everything's always varying. There's a bit of magenta up there, I can see. There's a lot of subtle colours in those trees. Got there. That's definitely in shadow, right? Shadow, shadow time. It's definitely in shadow on this side. Yeah. Right. All coming together. Really go for that. Beautiful shapes of that tree, picking them out. Love the colour of these gum trees. No 
they can produce some stunning, stunning effects. Australian river gum trees, river red gums, which is what they are, are an absolute beauty to the eye. It's going to thicken the base up. Always paying attention to grass with ship. Now, pull through, and what that's doing is going to soften those beautiful ultramarine blue shadows. Soften them. And really make it all come together. Good variety. Chunky paint in the foreground. Soften those shadows right on the edge, particularly because they're not visually important in the picture. Look at that sunlight now, it's really popping on those trees. Really starting to pop. Starting to blend all these shadows, these beautiful blue shadows in the water. I'm getting a knife now and just really starting to get into it now. The water's soft. You've got to remember those reflections, if you want to keep them convincing, they've got to be very soft. As opposed to some other harshness that the palette knife may have. All right, we're getting there, getting there. Now, I don't know if you can see, but if you have a look up there, you'll see a goanna climbed that tree there. <laughs> so, all very interesting stuff. It's all happening. Just clean that blue up. Ultramarine blue, white, a little bit of magenta. Just going to clean the top of that sky up a little. Where are we here? This one. Let's just get that tone correct. About the one I'm after. So with these blues now, you can introduce them over the top, picking out the negative spaces in between the leaves and the trunks. Getting that really working on getting the draftsmanship by sticking extra blues in amongst the leaves up there. Okay, now we're always working around and around, never completely finishing anything until we've got something else on the go. So, bin run. We've got a lot of the major colours and tones in, but what we need now is probably pick out a little bit more of the twig activity, like a little bit more refinement. So, sunlight colour, yellow ochre and white. We want to start picking out, got the knife on edge. Start paying attention to some subtle details. And let's just clean that knife. 
taking paint off now. And these little refining marks will really help pull the painting together. A bit like if you saw me paint that Sydney painting, the painting you did at Sydney Harbour. The little sticks and boats and houses really pulled it together in the abstract world. So that's the theory. Right, what are we working here? So you go into almost refinement mode. You're trying to be refined. Of course, you're working fast, so it's always a little bit clumsy, especially with me. But uh, what we're uh, we're thinking refinement. We're not thinking, oh, let's work as broad and as fast as we can. We're actually thinking refinement, but under that time frame, you haven't got time to be too refined. So you refine, <laughs> refined. So what happens is you end up getting a nice combination of rugged honesty. Pay attention to detail. Let's have a look at that. That immediately is starting to pull things together better. You know, just bits here and there. Light and shadow. And all the rest. What else we got? What else do we have? Let's just keep picking that light. Beautiful reflective qualities with ochres and stuff like that. The underside really getting Really getting lit up nicely. Just using the paint that's already there from the sky and Pulling back up to the orange to refine that draftsmanship. Burnt siennas and yellow ochres. When you look up underneath the gum trees, there's plenty of those ochres coming up from the ground. It's just a lovely thing. So we'll keep running with that. Wipe that knife clean. of ultramarine blue, viridian green. Well, that's the first shadow for the day. Going into shadow for a minute. Getting there, just going to soften this because that's a shadow in the water, so it's very much a soft shadow. Let's just have a look at that. It's 
softening, hardening, moving things around. Right, get in there, had a bit of spice now, a little bit of accents here and there. Well, that was a bit of bright colour, cad colours, beautiful stuff. Just got to feel it. All right, now we've got a big impression. The light's moved around a bit. That lizard's still there on the side of that tree, beauty. I feel like I've got what I was set out to achieve. Beautiful sunny day, the real character of the gum trees, with the light and shadow the real subtle softness of the water and reflective qualities contrasting dramatically with the chunky foreground with a few sharp bright colours thrown in to really pull it forward and then that out of focus water really drops it off I'm going to blend it in and out of focus and draftsmanship all around the picture okay well here we are back in the studio got the painting out on the easel been having a look at it. Now I was really happy with what I did on site. The aim of the painting or the concept was to capture the Australian outback in full sunlight, those beautiful majestic gum trees with all their subtleties, almost making it like the portrait of the gum tree if you like. Then contrasting all that dramatic heat and sunlight with beautiful tranquil soft river water as a great contrast because I always believe painting is about contrast. And uh, what I've done at home also is I just analysed it and one of the things that really characterises these old majestic gum trees are the fact that you get up high in the branches you get beautiful kind of squiggly trunks. So I got the rigger out which is a very fine haired brush and with that you just uh, it's a great way to get finishing details on the painting but without overworking it and it gives that same spontaneity the spontaneity and the, and the randomness that I captured quickly on site, that working faster than you can intellectualise, the rigour seems to have a great effect like at going with that, but at the same time finishing the painting more. So these branches, I just flick them in like so, and you get all this super detail, but it really captures the essence of the gum tree. So I did a few of them, but you don't want to overdo it because you want to try and do as little as possible in the studio. It's all about just enhancing what was there on the day in the studio without going too far away from the original concept. Okay, so we did that and also there was a few clouds chuffing around in the, on the day itself. While I was painting I didn't put them in but when I got home I thought that could really add to the composition because what it does, it helps lead you in, you hit the gum trees and then you keep on going into a distant subject so you've got extra subject after the uh, gum trees and the water etc. So I feel that's added an extra dimension to the work and uh, basically all up I'm pretty happy with it now so what I'll do is, is I'll get the camera off and we'll have a close-up at all the techniques and see what you guys think. All right let's do it. Mm -hmm. 